Please welcome Brittany Daniel to our home. Welcome, Brittany. Welcome. You. Welcome. Thank so you. you took a break. It took a hiatus. What about three years ago from yes. from the show? Yes. You you got the word. Yes. Answer. Yes. How how were you diagnosed? Um, how did that news come to you? Well, I, w I was experiencing some low back pain, and which everybody has low back pain, but it persisted yeah. for several months. And then I had swollen lip nodes, um, flu-like symptoms, uh, night sweats, and so I went in to see a do my doctor, and they ran a bunch of scans and tests on me, and then they determined that I had stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Stage four, that... Yeah. Uh, that moved quick. That did move quickly. How long did you have those symptoms before you, actually, you saw a doctor? Um, I had them for several months, and that's the thing that mm -hmm. I took away from all of this, is that you have to listen to your body. Like, if something's telling you that something's not right, and I have to say, a couple weeks into the pain, I remember telling one of my friends, I said, I know this sounds crazy, but the pain I'm experiencing in my body, it's almost like I feel like this is what it would feel like if you had cancer. Oh. And I know that's mm -hmm. so weird, but I feel like your body just tells, tells you when you. something's not right. So I feel like if something feels off, go get yourself checked and like keep getting yourself checked until you figure it but out. But is it? But that when that when that voice is telling you something's not right, does yes. it come in the form of a whisper or is it shouting at you? Um, and you just choose to ignore that's it. That's the thing is, you know, like Oprah talks about the whisper. I feel like you know we get those whispers and yeah. then it starts shouting at me, yeah. and that's finally when I went when in because I had gone in, I'd gotten a couple tests done and they, they weren't able to find out what it was and then finally I was in so much pain that it was shouting. And, but when and they then, did, the doctors immediately said, you have to go into the hospital tomorrow. Yes, so I went in the hospital. Um, actually, that night I went to the hospital and then two days later I was on chemotherapy. So well, I, I mean, that was like a decision, like 24 hours. I mean, did you feel like it was a death sentence? I mean, it's like, we got to get you in right away because this is so serious. Um, you, you didn't have time to think I about it. I did not that. have time to think about it. It moved so fast. I don't know. I, I'm, I have such a warrior kind of spirit. I was like, what do we need to do? Let's do this. And so I just was like, let's, what, you know, I'm just ready to tackle it. My family was so amazing. They, my mom flew out. I moved in with my sister. And we just, they rallied around me and they just really took care of me. What, and what? I did six rounds of uh, cycles of chemotherapy. Six. Got through it. And, um, you know, I think one thing that, you know, I, I survived it. I, that's my mom. Aww. That's me, oh. actually, oh. right after chemotherapy. My hair is just growing back. And um, I think one of the hardest things that I think people don't talk about is um, depression that you can go through after going through chemotherapy. I never, I, yeah. I heard your story and yeah. I, and I didn't understand that. Yeah, you know. Aren't you relieved? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing is that, you know, when you find out, oh my gosh, I'm in remission because I, my body really took to the chemo. Um, but I, I experienced a lot of depression after going through chemo and I don't know if it was because of all the medication in my body and it kind of affects your hormones, but I don't know if a lot of people talk about it, but the more and more I'm talking to different, you know, other survivors that that is very common that people can go through depression. And that's hard because I have to say that might have been harder than even going through the physical pain was the emotional pain after because it's Dude. like you want to be like celebrating. You're yeah. like, I got through it. but. I was feeling such sadness for about a year. Is after. there is there a point where so you you immediately get the news? I imagine you go into that fight mode. Yes. That you're in. Yes. Then you get the news that whew, yes. I made this. Yes. It's a little bit, and this is very uh, uh, stretched. To, but you know, when you're driving and you swerve and you go, oh wow, it could have been really bad. Yes. And then down the road, you let you sort of have a meltdown, going, yes. wow, I could have lost. I think that's it. Is that I think the it feeling? Hit me. I think it really hit me, and I think it, I think it hit me too that wow. I kind of lost a couple years of my life too, just mm -hmm. in that because it, you know I went through the chemo and it took a while to recover from it too. I think I think it just really hit me everything, all the emotions. I didn't have time to process all the emotions that it all hit me at once. But thank goodness I you know I really looked into alternative medicine that helped me get through it. I, I did acupuncture and I think that really helped me um, help with the depression. And I, I started meditating and doing yoga and I think that really helped me. Also too just. I think one thing that's really important, if you know anybody that's going through uh, cancer or, or have gone through chemotherapy, to like 
really talk to them because sometimes you might physically look back and you're like, wow, your hair's grown back, you, you, you survived mm -hmm. it. But I think sometimes emotionally, it takes a while. Yeah. It takes to, a while. Yeah. So to really check in with your friends well, how that did, are going through it, like how are you really doing? Right. How, you know? how did the depression affect you every day? Was it you couldn't get out of bed? What were some of the... Um, it, I, I could get out of bed, but I just felt I, I've never, because I've never experienced depression before. Just yeah. such an overwhelming sense of sadness. Did like, you cry a lot? All, yes, a lot of sadness, and I just never experienced it. And it was, it was a hard thing. You know, that's why I want to talk about it now. Is I did not know other people went through this. I think it's kind of like maybe moms that go through postpartum depression. Like just to know, okay, this is part of it, and this. Too, I love the quote: "This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. It will pass." I understand yeah. you heard uh, Robin Roberts from yes. uh, GMA talk about yes. her ordeal and that she experienced depression. Yes. And it, for you to hear another voice say It was so healing to my heart to talk to Robin Roberts and to, to hear her story about that too. Just knowing that, you know what, other people are going through this and that's why I even want to talk about it because there are people out there that right now are going through this and I want them to know that they are not alone and that mm -hmm. they're going to get through this and that um, if they can reach out to their friends, if they can go to support groups, if acupuncture works for them, whatever whatever it takes, that they will get through it. A lot of times I think it's the medication that's just in your body that needs mm -hmm. to run out, that it, they will get through it. And so if they can really sur surround themselves with support and love, that they will get through it. Now, I know that you decided not to share any of this with your coworkers um, until recently. Um, actually, I, I I I told my coworkers. I um I didn't tell I didn't tell the public. I told my my close ca my cast members, um, my family, and a couple close friends. But I I didn't tell anyone else. And so just recently, um, about a month ago, I, I finally shared the news that this is what I've been going How, through the last couple yeah. Of years. Yeah. Why did you want to keep it? Keep it yeah. Was there a shame um, aspect? Was there? I a... think it was. It happened so fast, and I I come from the South and we're very like private, you know, very strong kind of close knit family. And I think we just kind of rallied together and we're like, we're going to get through this. It didn't yeah. feel like something that I was wanting to go public on at the time. And um, once we all kind of emotionally heal, because when you go through this, it's not just you, your whole family goes yeah. through it. I think once we all emotionally healed from this, it felt like a time where I realized, I was like, you know what, I need to be able to talk about this. Like, I need to still fully emotionally heal from this. And for me, being able to talk to other survivors and being able to help other people, I had this woman one time in the doctor's office when I was going through this at my worst state where I had no hair and I was so sick. And she had survived cancer, her hair had grown back, and she reached over and she said, you're gonna be okay. And just by another survivor saying that to me, yeah gave me such hope I mean it just my sister my mom anybody could say oh you're gonna get through this but another woman telling me that she's that you're gonna get through this I instantly could see myself two years from now and I just thought in that moment I'm like I have to make sure that I do that I have to make sure that I speak to people that are going through this when I get better